everybody. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study, teaching time. I'm Pastor Tony Williams, Senior of Love of Christ Community Church, a church with you in mind. It's our desire that God touch you, that God move you, that God stir you up, that God do something great in your life. Um, we're going to pray, and then we're going to have a worship song, and then I'm going to come back up and teach. So, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your patience, and thank you for your kindness. Father God, right now, I just uh, ask that you just take over this service, that your Holy Spirit just be in complete control and complete charge. Father God, separate us from ourselves so we're not seen and we're not heard. But, Lord, I claim right now, everything that's done will be done of you. Every hindering spirit, I bind you. Every evil thought, I bind you. Every opposition, I bind you. Anything that will speak contrary, that will speak crossways, that will try to confuse or make babbling of the words that I will speak, I bind right now in the name of Jesus. And, Father God, speak to your people. Speak to their hearts because they need to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. So Letitia is going to come up and bless us in song. Amen. It's a blessing to be here tonight and to worship the Lord. As I sing this song, if you know the words, please join along and sing. If not, just worship the Lord and let him know that he is worthy of all the praise. Thank you, Jesus.
to the Bible and uh, read a, a scripture that is found in Galatians 6, the ninth verse, sixth chapter of the ninth verse, Galatians 6, 9, it's just one. Amen, Galatians 6, 9, and it reads, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Another version says, let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due time we, we will reap if we do not grow weary. We must not get tired of doing good. We will receive our harvest of eternal life at the right time, we must not give up. Amen? Let the good Lord be praised. I'm ready to just speak what he has on my heart. And I would say, have you ever just been tired? You've been tired of work. You've been tired of people, places, and things. Tired of things not getting better. Tired of negative chatter. Tired of giving and no one appreciating. Tired of confusion. Tired of being judged. Tired of being misunderstood. Just tired. Have you ever just been tired. Well, I came to encourage the discouraged. I came to push the stuck. I came to straighten the crooked. I came to give hope to the hopeless. I came to speak clearly to the, over the noise. I came to cheer on the confused. I came to awaken those who are sleeping. I came to speak to those who have ears to hear. You've come too far to give up now. You've come too far to give up now. That word weary means tired, tired of, feeling or showing extreme tiredness, especially as a result of excessive exertion. Making it plain is like you're giving it you're all, and you have no more left to give. You've tried everything, and everything is spent. Everything you had mentally, physically, emotionally is just drained from you. And then you just come to this place where you're just tired. It seems like the next obvious step is to quit, is to just give up, it's just to to, to just make amends and, and say, you know what, I tried this thing for long enough. Maybe I need to just give it up. I, I've done this as long as I can, and maybe it's just time to give up. I, I've, I've 
prayed for as long as I can, and maybe it's just time to give up. I, I've tried to be as nice as I, I tried to be as patient. I tried to be as understanding. I tried to be as encouraging. I tried to be as strong. I tried to be as faithful as I can, and, and everything just seems to be coming unraveled. So maybe I should just give up. Maybe I should just slow down, let somebody else go, push back. Maybe it's just time. Give up. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Oh, I sense in my spirit, and, and don't nobody shout me down because I can't hear you anyway. I, I sense in my spirit that you come to the place where not only are you weary, but now you become strong in your boldness about your weariness. I, I, I sense that you're not just weary, you're not just tired, you're tired of staying on a straight and narrow, and so your mouth want to start saying something it shouldn't say. I, I, I sense in my spirit that, that, that not only are you weary, you're weary of being under authority, and you don't want to be under authority anymore, so your spirit is rising up, and your man is, excuse me, your man is rising rising up. The carnal person is rising up. So you tired that you can't see or you think that people can't discern what's happening. So you're not just weary, but you're becoming strong and powerful in the wrong things. I came to tell you, be patient. God has not abandoned you yet. God has not given up on you yet. God has not changed his mind about his promises, about your gift. The word says the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That literally means that what God gave you and what God made you and what God promised you is not only. It's irrevocable. That means that God himself cannot take it back. I came to tell somebody it's not time to give up. It's not time to go to an alternative mind wave. It's not a, a, a time to just say, I'm, I'm going to gonna just let it happen as it will happen. You have to stay firm in what God has promised you and knowing what God has determined is your life, is what your life is going to be. You, you, you can't give up right now. I, I can't help you say, yeah, you tired enough to quit. You've been dealing with enough to give up. You've been discouraged and hurt enough and let down enough to quit. You've thrown up enough prayer requests and God hasn't answered them. I, I can't tell you that. There was a man in the Old Testament by the name of Naaman. And it said that Naaman was a great leader. He was a, 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 so, a, 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 a leader of soldiers. He had command and he had prowess. He was good at what he did. And, and when the word is describing him, it says all the good things and it says, but. So everything that was talked about naming that was good was canceled out with that but. It said, but Naaman was a leper. That means that Naaman couldn't be in normal society like normal people. But there, there was a, a, a young lady who was a servant, who was actually a captive, a servant in his house. And she spoke to Naaman's wife, said, I wish that my, my Lord would get a hold of the prophet in Israel. Because he'd cure him of that leprosy. I'm trying to tell somebody, don't give up. And, and the word got to, to Naaman, or to the king of Israel, actually. And the king of Israel was, uh, was torn up. He's like... Is he trying to make war with me? What is going on here? He knows I don't have that power. He's trying to set me up. And Elisha told him, relax. I'm paraphrasing. I got this. And so Elisha got together with Naaman. And he didn't even lay hands on him. He didn't even go have coffee with him. He didn't have Starbucks or Paneras or nothing. He just told him, 
via somebody. Go dip yourself in the Jordan River seven times. I'm trying to tell somebody don't give up. I'm trying to tell somebody you've come too far. I'm trying to tell somebody it might seem the, the next logical step is just to quit, but I came to tell somebody, not now. Not now. And, and, and so Naaman was told to do this, and he kind of got indignant. That's what people do sometimes when you, when you give them the right word. When you give them the proper word, when you want to instruct them, when you want to direct them, when you want to correct them, and all you're trying to do is give it from your heart because God gave it to you. Yes. You know, they misunderstand sometimes that you know, you get misunderstood sometimes. But I, I, I'm not worried about that because I'm not a quitter. And I'm going to keep on teaching and preaching the gospel as long as God gives me a voice. And I'm going to keep on encouraging people that might not be around anybody else that's encouraging them. See, what happened with Naaman was he was told to go to that River Jordan and dip seven times. And then your skin is going to come back like a little baby's. And he said, man, why do I have to go to that dirty water? Aren't there cleaner rivers in my neighborhood? Aren't there, aren't there, aren't there safer places to go in, in my, uh, my uh, familiar surroundings? I don't have to be challenged. I don't have to be pushed. I don't, I don't have to be prodded. I, I, I should, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a high-ranking official in the army. I, I, I should. Then his servant said, look, 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 if, if, if he would have told you to go slay an army, go do something great, go do something that's hard to do, wouldn't you mount up and do it? He's like, yeah, so, go, so just, just follow the easy words. Go, go to the dirty Jordan if you think it's dirty, but do what he said. And I, I, just, I just came to, 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 to just maybe just go where Naaman went. Every step of the way, he, he's fighting with himself. He's saying, I know that I've been told something. However, I'm, I'm, I'm battling because I don't kind of want to do it. I, I know that I've been instructed to do something, and I know that I've been promised something if I do it. But man, do I have enough faith to walk there? Do I have enough faith to get in that water? When I know, when, see, the thing is you try to figure it out with your logical mind. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That does not add up to logic. That adds up to faith. So when Naaman was going, he had to take a, a, a step after step of faith. Yeah. See, sometimes when you're weary, all you, can hit, all you need is somebody to inject a little bit of faith. Sometimes when you're about to give up, all you, I know somebody out there saying, preach, preacher, because all you wanted was somebody to tell you, help is on the way. All you wanted was somebody to send you just a crumb of encouragement because you've been discouraged for long enough because you've been in a battle and you've been wounded and you've been dazed and you've been confused. But here is the word of God coming to build you back up. Hold on. You've come too far to turn back now. You've come way too far. To give up now. So Naaman goes and he gets in that water. And you know what? He was told to dip seven times. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't told to go put his toe in the water. He wasn't gonna go, told to go to see if the water was hot or if it was cold. He wasn't told to go get close to it and breathe it in. He was told to submerge himself. Please don't miss it. See, some of us just want the Christianity to just be too cute. We just want it to be too kind. We just want it to be too nice. We, we kind of want to, you know, want to feel somebody else's uh, uh, whatever they have. and, and, and it, Help me some. We, 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 we don't want to we don't want to invest all of us we, we don't want to give all of us we want to save something we want to retain some of our identity we want to retain some of our old person we want to hold on to just 
just a little bit of who I used to be. We, we don't want to submerge. See, the thing is that Naaman was told to dip himself, his whole body. He could not leave a hair out. He had to put every single hair from the crown of his head and the bottom of his feet. Everything had to be submerged. See, that's it. Sometimes the reason why you might not have any strength right now is because you have failed to give all of you. The, the, the reason is not because you've given so much. The reason is because you haven't given enough. The reason why you cannot be renewed is because not because you've been depleted. It's just because you have not been submerged. You haven't given it all. When we hold on to some of us, we don't allow him in those places. When we hold on to us, we don't allow God to take everything. So Naaman gets in that water. And when he dipped the first time, nothing changed. When he dipped the second time, nothing changed. When he dipped the third time, nothing changed. When he dipped the fourth time, nothing changed. When he dipped the fifth time, nothing changed. When he dipped the sixth time, nothing changed. But, just like that butt was on him before he got, oh, but, just like that butt that said that Naaman was all these great things, had all these accolades, but he was alive. But when he dipped that seventh time, Every butt that was before him, every defect that was before him, every hindrance that was before him, every bondage that was before him, every distraction that was before him, every bit of confusion that was before him, every limitation that was before him went away when he went down that seventh time. You know, sometimes you just got to be patient while God is working it out. You just got to be patient while God is moving. You got to be patient, but you have to hold on to the promise that God is working it out. So Paul is telling the Galatians, you can't get tired now. You can't give up now. You've come too far. You let me preach the gospel to you. You let me break your traditions. You let me redirect and correct. You let me build you as a church. You let me teach you the things of God. You let me put grace and mercy before you. You let me take religion out and put the grace of Jesus in. You come too far. Don't let anything bring you back. Don't let your weariness. Don't let your self-esteem. Don't let your self-righteousness. Don't let the venom of your past don't let the spirit of religion, don't let anything threaten what you've gotten to this point. It's kind of funny that he was speaking to the church. He wasn't speaking to a homeless person. He wasn't speaking to nobody who knew God, didn't know God. He, he wasn't speaking to anybody that he didn't know personally. He knew them Personally, he knew them by name. He didn't just know their character and their motives. He knew them. Yeah. He knows you. He don't just know your motive and your characters. He knows you. He knows when you were put in your mother's womb, he knows you. He knows the very hairs that are on your head. He knows you. 
And the thing that he knows, he knows the season. He knows that a lot of us have not just been able to rest. He knows a lot of us have not just been able to settle in. He knows a lot of us are just projecting what life is going to be like after this whole big calamity. Slow your roll. He says, don't get weary in well-doing because your reward is right around the corner. He said, don't become selfish. He said, don't become self-absorbed. He said, don't become reclusive and don't become self, self, uh, self, self-serving. self He said, don't put the emphasis on you. He said, right now is not the time to draw up. It's not the time to, to wither up. It's not the time to retreat. It's not the time to, to pull back. He said, as a matter of fact, it's time to kick down the door. It's time to push open the door. It's time to press forward harder than you ever. It's time to pray more than you ever pray. It's time to encourage the world more than you ever have. It's time to become less self, more selfless than you've ever been before. He said, now is your greatest moment if you're willing to not get weary, if you're willing not to lose heart, if you're willing not to lose hope. He says your reward is very close. I don't know. I don't know. You know, sometimes it does get discouraging. It does. Sometimes it does become weighty. It does. Sometimes it it becomes difficult and and you have more opposition than you have help. You have more people talking against you than you do praying for you. You have more people judging you than you have people trying to understand you. No matter what, Don't you get weary in well-doing. It says, let us not be discouraged in well-doing or sowing to the spirit. Whatever labor and fatigue, whatever expense and difficulty it may be attended with for in due season. When the harvest is come or the goodness of God that God has appointed and for which is our duty and interest patiently to wait. We shall reap abundantly ample fruit if we faint not. But listen to this. If we do not allow our hands to hang down, either through lukewarmness or slothfulness, or through timidity or fear. Oh, <laughs> woo! So, 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 so the setup was that you can get there if you don't become slothful, apathetic, if you don't become lukewarm. Because last time I read, read in Revelation, I believe Revelation 3.12, he said, I wish you were either hot or cold. He said, but since you need a hot or cold and you are lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. He said, lukewarmness, you see, God don't like things tepid. God wants it one way or the other. See, he wants you either all in or all out. He either wants your whole heart or none of your heart. He either wants every bit of you or none of you because God does nothing half because he said his only begotten to do the work that only he could do. He didn't have step. He didn't let a ram or a goat take it. He put humanity on himself and went to the cross taking everything. He don't do it halfway. You can't be lukewarm and you can't be slothful. You can't be timid and you can't be fearful. That's what the word means. If we faint not, if we don't give over exhausted and disheartened, just because you lost heart doesn't give you the right to give up. Just because things aren't adding up right doesn't mean that you can give up. Just because you mapped out a plan and a plan got blown up and you don't know where you were because everything is all jumbled does not give you the right to give up. It's implied here that unless a man perseveres in doing good to the end of life, he cannot hope for a reward. 
the person who becomes disheartened and who gives over his efforts, he that is appalled by obstacles. Ain't that funny how we get appalled that something ain't going our way? I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm going to get upset. I'm going to get twisted. I'm going to get attitude problem because things aren't going my way because somebody put some obstacles in my way. And that faints account on embarrassments thrown in his way. He that pines for ease. No, don't miss that. He who all that he wants is the easy road. He who all he wants is all the green lights. He who all that he wants is go to the front of the line. He who all that wants never to be sick, never to be discomforted, never to be challenged. He that pines only for ease and withdraws from the field of benevolence. Who shows that he has no true attachment to the cause and that his heart has never been truly in the work of his calling. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to you? If it's that easy to give up, then you never were all in. If it's that easy to quit, you never were all in. If it's that easy to just say, I'm going the other way, you never were truly invested. If it's that easy when things get hard and when it comes, something comes against you and something's not going your way because it's not easy because all of a sudden things have changed and you just give up, you never were in in the first place. That's what the word means, that if you could give up at this point, that you were never there in the first place. If a woman who's enduring labor decides that she's not going to push. If a woman who's enduring labor decides that I don't want to push because it's too painful. If a woman who's in the middle of labor and the doctor and nurse is just saying all you have to do is push and she decides it's too painful. I don't want to endure this pain. I don't want to go through this. You know what will happen if she really does not push and they can't get that baby? She and the baby are going to die. I, I, I came to tell somebody that God is telling you to push right now. He's saying he's about to birth something in you. He's about to make something come out of you that has not come out yet. That's something that's been promised and something that's been planted. And all you have to do is endure the last minute of the labor and just bear it down and just push with all that you got, knowing that the promise of what God has given you is greater than the pain and the obstacle. You cannot just say I want it easy all day every day. Thank you. And expect that every day has got to go your way. Do you know even the days that you think aren't going your way and God are really going your way? Because we default to the natural too much. The person that becomes a true Christian. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Pastor, I said a salvation prayer. I sit in the front row. I don't miss a Wednesday or a Sunday. Hmm. He who becomes a true Christian. Wait a minute, Pastor. But I do know when to say amen. I do know when to say hallelujah and praise the Lord. I do know Genesis is the first book and I know Revelation is the last book. He who becomes a true Christian. So you mean it's not just with my lip service? No. It's not with that I understand what to say and when to say it, how to... No. Does God have your heart? See, and the thing about it is there's an attachment when you give something your heart. If you give your whole heart to the Lord, then nothing can discourage you no matter how bad. You, when you give your whole heart to the Lord, your mom could die. 
And you can say hallelujah anyhow. And not that you're rejoicing that your mom died. You're rejoicing that you know that although your mom died, she trusted in God and she will never die. And you'll see her later on in the suite by and by. See, I'm not saying that you don't have tough times and situations and issues that don't hurt and that just don't threaten you and don't even bring you to tears and bring you to your knees. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying if you have truly become a Christian, you don't have to worry about the confusion that comes from people, from the news, from, from governments, from, from people that are confused. Because you'll hear a single solitary voice and that will be the voice of God. It will say something like this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And no matter what, if everybody else is running like a chicken with their head cut off, he will direct your path. That's what the word of God says. See, you won't be worried about what's going on in the world. Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? You won't be worried about if you're going to make it or not because God said you're going to make it. God said you're going to make it. And then you can't start defaulting and taking off the bricks of the spirit and start putting on back on the bricks of the flesh. The bricks of the spirit are not strongholds. They're for you. The bricks of the flesh, those are the strongholds. They're against you. Don't divorce your Christian walk because you cannot see things in the natural. Now is the time that you get closer. You've come too far to give up now. You've come too far to give up now. The person who becomes a true Christian has enlisted as a soldier never to withdraw or to retreat. That person becomes pledged to do good in God's work always. No obstacles are able to deter him. No embarrassments are able to drive him from the field. Just like when he was young and with the influence of wisdom in his riper years, with his remaining powers within him, even when he's enfeebled by age. There's nothing that will deter him or her. For this is his life that he lives. Like Paul said it, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. There was no giving up. There was no quitting. There was no surrender. There was no retreat. There was no, uh, what, what do they call them when they, uh, when they run away from the army? You know what I'm talking about. No A-walling. No C-walling. No B-walling. No D-walling. But enlisting and being a soldier for the duration. Amen. So you've come too far to give up now. Like the words, like the song said, I know he didn't bring me this far to leave me. He's brought you to this point to lead you to the next point. He's brought you to this place so he can lead you to the next place. He's brought you to where you are so that you can regroup, so that you can settle, so that you can become stronger and grounded more, so that you could be better for the next steps. A word to the wise is about to go down. A word to the wise is about to go down. And if I were to tell it like I would normally say it, it's about to get real up in here. And it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for the lukewarm. It's not for the timid. It's not for the scared. It's not for the shame. It's not for those who don't know who their Savior. This moment, this next moment, this next season is not for the people that don't know who they are and who they serve. See, it's not going to be any easier as things go on. But listen to this. God didn't say it would be easy. 
God didn't say that everything would just be okay, that everything would become all the days of your life. But he did say this, while you are in the middle of a storm, he will be there. While the flood comes, he'll be right there with you. When your enemy comes, he's going to fight right there for you. Wherever you go, he's going to be your shield and your buckler. You're going nowhere, no matter how high or how low or anywhere, northeast, south or west, where God is not already. And since he's there, he is the king of kings. He is the lords of lords. He is is the all powerful he is the almighty he is the great I am and nobody by any means can harm you even in the midst of all the turmoil yes yeah, about to go down yes it's about to get real up in here but your God has already settled the end from the beginning and he has you in the palm of his hand you've come too far to give up now no matter what comes you better not back up no matter what happens you better not quit no matter what goes down you better not run away because you gotta stand still and see the salvation of the Lord it's about to go your way even when things are about to go down you just gotta hold on and trust you have to be convinced of who he is. You can't be deterred by the things you see. You can't unload the spiritual man and put back on the carnal man. You need to put more into the spiritual man so that the carnal man could die just a little more. You need to quit relying on your sources, your resources, and things that you can figure out. And let God, who already has it figured out, put in your heart, in your dreams, at nighttime, that he has you handled. And then peace will come in. Yes. What well, has been nothing but turmoil. You have to persevere. You have to be like the farmer who plants with anticipation but who works the field, who waters, who puts nutrients, who, who weeds, who, who, who takes care of the crop. You have to be like a farmer who, who wants the, the, the shoot starts coming up. He doesn't think about the seed that was. He's not stuck on what was. The good, the bad, the ugly are the secrets. He's not stuck on what was. You have to be like that farmer that when something threatens that, that plant, that precious plant, you have to be willing to see it from all angles. You got to be able to look at it from everywhere you can. And then anything that's threatening it, you have to be willing to eradicate it. You got to be like that farmer who once that shoot gets a little taller and starts having leaves. It don't remember the leaf of the, the shoot or the seed. You have to be willing to look for the next thing. Because a real farmer is always looking for the harvest. A real farmer might know, farmer might know it was a seed, once upon a time, but he's not in love with the seed. He's in love with what the seed can become. See, the Lord is not consumed with your momentary things because he knows for what purpose he made you. It wasn't a mistake that you were born in this time. It wasn't an accident that you were born during this time. It's not even some type of uh, wishy-washy, you know, did God get it twisted? No, you just have to man up. You just have to woman up. We just have to church up, and we just have to get up and get into our calling and quit crying about everything. And think about this. The God who brought you here is not going to leave you here because he don't remember the seed anymore. He's not looking at the shoot anymore. He's not looking at the leaves anymore. He's already taken care of every death that's around you. All he's looking for is the harvest. All God himself is looking for is the harvest that you are supposed to bring in. You right now are supposed to be an evangelist. 
You right now are supposed to be someone that's bringing people to the feet of Jesus. You right now are supposed to be an intercessor. You right now are supposed to be adapting to what is going on and adapting to the call of your mission in the Lord. Right now is a time for the harvest. Even though when a farmer plants and sows, they aren't impatient while they're waiting because they know what's going to happen. Though they don't see it yet, they don't become impatient and waiting because they know that when the time is right, they know that when the fruit is ripe, that their season for the harvest is a season to enjoy. See, the thing about it is, I'm going to give you five points and I'm going to let you go. If you give up, this is what you can't do. If you give up, you can't. If you give up, number one, you can't win. Have you ever seen somebody running a race? And even if they were in first place, if they stopped before the finish line, that they won. They, they were the fastest in the race. They had a lead in the race. But if they don't break that tape, they don't win. If you give up, you can't win. Number two, if you give up, you can't encourage. How can you give somebody encouragement if you're not willing to do it yourself? How can you tell somebody how to do it if you haven't done it yourself? How can you tell somebody it's safe to go through the fire and through the trials if you haven't been through them yourself? How can you tell somebody that you trust in God when you yourself have not? If you give up, you can't encourage. You can't give anybody encouragement. You can't give anybody a push. You can't give anybody a hand up. You can't give anybody anything. If you give up, if you quit, you can't encourage. So you got to understand right now, if you're willing to quit, if you're willing to tuck your tail in, if you're going to cower and you don't finish the race, you can't encourage anybody because no matter what's coming out of your mouth, they're looking at you. No matter what you want to make, make your words say, they're watching you. No matter how much you say you have faith and you acting like you're a coward, they don't believe you. If you quit, you can't encourage. Number three, if you give up, you can't overcome. You just cannot overcome. Because all that your story will say is it got hard and I quit. It got too tough and I gave up. It got real difficult and I surrendered. If you give up, you can't overcome. Number four, if you give up, you can't testify. The word says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. The blood of the lamb is still good. But if you give up, you don't have a testimony. If you give up, you can't tell people when it got hard that day. And I thought about it in 2020 when COVID was out and, and everything was going to disarray. And I quit praying. Oh, you did. And I quit believing. Oh, you did. And I quit reading my word. Oh, you did. But I sure believe that God can. Won't he do it? 
You can't testify. You can't testify. Your testimony is twisted. Your testimony is false. See, if you give up, and I'm not saying that anything against you for going through the fight. The fight is natural. The fight is on. We're all going through the fight. I'm trying to encourage the whole body. I'm not trying to tell anybody that you're not doing right. I'm trying to tell you these things are warning signs to you. If you, if you quit, if you give up, you can't testify. You can't say how good he is. You can't say how sweet he is. You can't say when it was in my dark time, he was right there. You cannot testify if you give up. You can't say woulda, shoulda, coulda, almost. Is he God or not? Was he there or not? Did he come through or not? Did he show himself strong or not? Can you testify or not? If you give up, you cannot testify. I'm trying to tell somebody you got to build up your endurance. You can't get weary in well-doing. Number five, last one. If you give up, you can't reap a harvest. If you give up, you won't see the full goodness of God. If you give up, you won't bring your dreams and his promises to pass. If you give up, you don't have the right to hold him to his word. If you give up, you can't reap the harvest. You cannot get the promises. You cannot get the fullness of what he guarantees if you give up. See, Paul told the Galatians, you can't give up now. He told him, you can't be who you used to be. He told him, you can't become discombobulated just because things aren't what they used to be. He told him, you cannot get tired of doing the right thing, even if people saying you're doing the wrong thing. You can't get tired of doing what's right even when people are trying to shout you down. You can't give up doing what you know that God has planted in your heart because not their promises, but your promises are what's at stake. See, God is telling you that he promised you something. He gave you a promise. And everything that he promised you will come to pass. You've come too far to give up now. You come. You might not get Miss Congeniality. You might not be the homecoming queen or the homecoming king. You, 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 you might not get the most voted, the most amicable, the most likely to succeed. You. I don't want anything that's temporary to stop me from getting from my eternal. I don't want anything that people might give to me that they might give to me to shut me down and to give me to be satisfied for the season, for the moment. What God has promised me the greater things in glory. I'm going to keep on keeping on and I want you to keep on keeping on too. I don't want you to become discouraged just because things seem a little awkward or they might seem a little upside down. I want you to keep on keeping on because God promised you something. But you can't get there if you give up. If nobody else will encourage you, sing that song to yourself. I just can't give up now. I've come too far from when I was a seed in the ground. And I know he didn't bring me this far to leave me. Just because the work is, is not finished doesn't mean that the work is not finished. Just because you can't see it does not mean that God hasn't already done it. Just because it's not manifest yet doesn't mean it's not a rock solid promise. He who promised you it he who begun a work in you is able to complete that work in you. 
He doesn't do anything halfway. All you have to do is just keep believing. Keep pressing. Keep pushing. And get that word, give up, out of your vocabulary. Get that word, I, them words, I quit, out of your vocabulary. Get those words of judgment and condemnation out of your vocabulary. And start saying, God, I'm with you and you're with me. I want the harvest. I'm a soldier, completely enlisted and completely sold out. I'm not going to change my mind because it gets rocky. I'm not going to give up because it gets hard. I'm not going to start cursing because I don't see it. Tell them I'm here and I'm here for the long haul. I'm here and I need your glory. I'm here and I need your provision. I'm here and I need your encouragement. But I'm not going anywhere. If I got to take seven dips, well, let me take seven dips. It, uh, the first dip, uh, it might not do nothing. The second dip, it, it might not do nothing. The third dip, it might not do nothing. The fourth dip, it might not do nothing. The fifth dip, it might not do nothing. The sixth dip, it might not do some, nothing. But the seventh dip is going to cancel out everything that was against me. And when I go down and come back up, the promises that God made to me shall come to pass. Don't be afraid to endure while it's hard. Don't be afraid to enlist in the army while there's a war going on. Don't get scared right now. It's the wrong time because God is about to lay crowns on his children. God's about to bless you like he's never blessed you before. He's about to open doors and the windows of heaven like he never has before some people might not know what's going on but you know you've come too far to give up now God bless you and let me pray for you let me pray for you I release power. I release encouragement. I release boldness. And I release strength. I release authority. And I release your Christ-given identity. I release an everlasting endurance in you. The Lord said, for the joy set before him, he endured the shame despising those things so that he could be seated at the right hand of glory so that he could get you where you need to be. I release his anointing to carry you through every obstacle, every up, and every down. You are blessed. The word said it. Jesus proved it. I know you believe it. And you keep walking through it. You're blessed in the city. And you're blessed in the field. You're blessed when you lie down. And you're blessed when you rise up. You're blessed in your mind. You're blessed in your body. Your soul is prosperous. You've come too far to give up. You don't know how to quit. Every relationship you have. Everywhere you go. And everything you do. You are blessed in Jesus name